For this molecule, we notice that we have three blue atoms on top, and we also have three blue atoms on the bottom. So this particular molecule has six blues and six reds. So we would like to figure out what the point group of this particular molecule is. And one of the first things that we always want to look for is the high order rotation axis. And for this particular molecule, the high order rotation axis is a C3. So we would like to be able to demonstrate that with our model. So we have a specialized style of cap that we put on here. So we can put this on top here. And the cap is set up in such a way that there's openings. So if we are to rotate it and we get a different color sticking out through these little triangles, that would tell us that we don't have a C3 operation. So long as we move the cap around and we still get blues poking through the little triangle cutouts, then we know that we actually do have a C3 operation. So let's see what we get if we do that. So we want to rotate counterclockwise. And when we do that, we get to sit down. We see that all the atoms are still blue. So that tells us that C3 is a symmetry operation, at least as far as we can tell from this side of the molecule. So to double check, let's look at the other end of the molecule. The other end of what would be our proposed C3 axis. So we can set up the molecule like that. We put our cap on top of it. And we notice that when we, at least when we start, that through all the triangular cutouts, they are blue. So let's see what happens if we do a C3 operation. So we can pick this up a little bit, slide it around and do a C3 on it. And we see that when we do that, it lines up perfectly. We almost, we might also might notice that if we take the cap off and we look down the axis, the C3 axis, you also notice in front we see a triangle and in back we see an inverted triangle. And we might recognize this particular arrangement as being very similar to the staggered conformation of ethane. And as we recall, the, st the staggered conformation of ethane belongs to the point group D3D. So here we have an example starting with the icosahedral group, and we've been able to reduce the symmetry down to D3D. Shows that D3D is a subgroup of IH. This molecule is somewhat similar to the previous molecule in that at one end we have this triangular arrangement of blue atoms. Most of the remaining atoms are going to be red, but on the opposite side, rather than also being a blue triangle, we have three yellow atoms arranged in a triangular pattern. So we would like to try to figure out what is the point group of this particular molecule. So uh, we might imagine that this is going to have a C3 high order rotation axis. Let's see if it does. We can put our cap on top of here and we see that in the little triangular cutouts at the edges, the yellow color from behind pokes through. So long as those colors are the same, we realize that we actually have a symmetry operation. So let's try to do a C3 on this. We do a C3, we rotate counterclockwise, and we see that lo and behold, the atoms line up perfectly. So we do that C that has C3. If we go clockwise, Again, all the atoms line up. You see the yellow poking through. This tells us that C3 to the minus one is a symmetry operation of the group. But you may wonder, well, what about the other side? Do we still have a C3 along the same axis looking from the opposite direction? So we can do that. We set the molecule up this way. Looking straight down perpendicular to the molecule is where we think our C3 axis is. So we can use our previous cap the model. So we set it up in this sort of fashion. And again, we can do a third of a turn in the counterclockwise direction. And we see that, yes, it does line up because blue color is poking out through the triangular cutouts. If we go clockwise, let's see what we get. We see that not only do these blue atoms, but along the edges, we can actually see that the red atoms line up also. So this tells us that C3 to the minus one is also a symmetry operation uh, of the group to which this molecule belongs. 
So now the question becomes, which point group is this? Well, since this side is a blue triangle and this side is yellow, we well, don't have D3D anymore. What we've done is we've reduced the symmetry from uh, D3D down to C3D in a similar manner to how we went from D5D to C5D. So uh, by switching the uh, colors on the opposite triangle, we reduce the symmetry down. So this is an example of C3V, another one of the many subgroups of IH. Here we have yet another modification to the icosahedral structure. And we see that at each end, we have a blue atom. The rest of the atoms at the vertices are red. So this is similar to our previous example where we had two blue and 10 red. But this has something else going on. Connecting the red atoms along the waist of the molecule, we actually have a blue atom in between. We normally encounter this kind of a circumstance in uh, octahedral uh, situations when this would be something like ethylene diamine, where we'd have a bidentate ligand and each of the ends is along the vertices and there's some uh, chemical piece in between. So that's what we have here. And in fact, along the waist, we actually have five of these. So we have one, two, three, four, and five of these purples. So we have red, purple, red. And we'll notice if you look down from the top, maybe hard to see, maybe easier to see as you go around the edge. But these make a left twist going from the front pentagon to the back pentagon. There's sort of a left twist. So we notice in each case it goes from here to there. It's like a left twist. So in this type of a molecule, this molecule is going to be chiral. And in fact, when we have this arrangement where the ligand, the bidentate ligand goes from the front to the back and in the process turns to the left or it's counterclockwise. We call this the big L. So it's lambda with a capital L, capital lambda in Greek. So this is one of the chiral versions. If it, on the other hand, it had gone from here to there, so it was clockwise or to the right, that would be a capital delta. So it'd be a big D in Greek for that particular uh, conformation. So each of those is chiral and optically active. So in this particular case, what we've done is we reduce the symmetry down to D5, just simply D5, not D5D, not D5H, because in the process of assembling with these particular bidentate ligands, this red, purple, red, we've removed all the mirror planes. So to make an example of the subgroup D5, for the icosahedral group, we had to use these uh, bidentate ligands. We see a very similar situation in the octahedral group. If, for example, in the octahedral group, we have three ethylene diamine ligands uh, connected to make the six attachment positions to a central metal atom, that gives us the point group D3. Another way to get the point group D3, we would recall from ethane when we have a skew conformation. There's no way to make a skew conformation for the octahedral group or for the icosahedral group because uh, to be an octahedron or an icosahedron, the angles have to be fixed and the distances have to be fixed. So the only way to get a D5 uh, or a D3 with no mirror plane would be to have these bidentate ligands attached and attached in uh, a similar manner. So they're all pointing in the same direction. So this is the group D5.